Um, welcome to the Parks and Recreational Advisory Board on March, April 8th, I mean, Monday, April 8th at 5.30. Um, the City of Gladstone is abiding by guidelines set forth in House Bill 2560, which requires the governing body of the public body to extent reasonably possible to make all meetings accessibly remote through, technolo through technological means and provide opportunity for members of general public to remotely submit oral and written testimony during meetings to extent in-person oral and written testimony is allowed. Therefore, this meeting will be open to the public both in person and virtually using the Zoom platform. Um, so we'll do a roll call. Kristen, if you could do that, please. Mm -hmm. Kim Agramson. Kim Agramson here. Nancy Turner. Present. Bruce Hildreth. Present. Eric Butler. Oops, he's not here. Uh, Kate Cornelius. Here. And Veronica Reichel. I am here. Oh, and David Michael. Uh -huh. Sorry. Yeah, I'm here too. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. We will start with the approval of the March 11th, 2024 meeting notes. Um, the, um, so does anyone have any corrections that need to be made or concerns or, and if not, I would appreciate a motion to accept. Move to accept the notes. Kate Cornelius seconded. Okay. Again, Kristen, if you could take a roll call, that would be great. Uh, Kim Agramson? Approve. Bruce Hildreth? Approve. Nancy Turner? Approve. Kate Cornelius? Yes. And David Michael? Approve. Okay. So first we're going to have some updates from Darren and the staff. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, first on the list, update Robin Hood Park improvements. So we're still waiting on the contractor for that. Um, I anticipate that is probably going to be at least a month out, if not longer. We're waiting on weather, of course. Um, once they get started, um, it, it'll be a really quick process. It's just a matter of getting them in there without tearing up the entire park to get what they need to get done. So I would err on the side of having them hold off a little bit just so that we don't have to go back and make a bunch of repairs to the turf and everything like that. Um Meldrum Bar Park Dog Park. So in the packet, there was a, a, a letter of recommendation or of support for that um, that was in the packet for everyone. <clears throat> uh, and where we're at with that, so that is a T-Mobile grant. Um, that grant has been submitted. I believe it was submitted uh, two weeks ago, I believe. Um, and we should know the outcome of that in mid-May. They don't have a date uh, specifically uh, set for when they'll know, but I was told mid-May for that. Um, the David M. Scott, Kristen, can you pull up those two things? Mm -hmm. So the David M. Scott part. Hold on a second, I got it. Um, when Nancy and Kate and I met about the, or <clears throat> a couple weeks ago. So we figured we put up uh, or we would print up uh, a couple different looks of it because maybe not everybody realizes what the park looks like or um, what the boundaries of the park are. So the picture you're seeing there, that's a um, uh, Google Earth or whatever they call it, um, picture of the park. Uh, the reason I wanted to to bring that up is because the sign will will go in there. We just need to figure out exactly where that sign will go, um, and that's not. I mean, we'll figure figure that out. I I think the bigger picture is um, the amenities that have been talked about there. I know we've talked about benches going in there. Uh, one of the concerns is is if you put a bench along the pathway, that pathway which you can't see all the way basically goes all, all the way over to Cracksburg or, uh, Middle School and then spills out onto their property. Part of the problem is if you're going to put a, um, a bench along that, 
you can't really put it on the right hand side of that pathway because there's a fence that pretty much runs along that whole property line there. And so your only other option then would be to put it along the uh, left side of that, which would be the, I believe, north side of that pathway. Problem is with that, then you're staring into somebody's house. So the thought that <clears throat> was brought up was, what if we did something more in the center of the park where we could put a couple benches um, with, because we'll have to put concrete out for the benches. I don't want to put them right on grass because that's a maintenance nightmare for our staff is to maybe put those benches, I'm thinking somewhere near where that first tree is in the middle of that um, with kind of a, maybe like a circle type concrete, something in the middle there where the benches would, they wouldn't sit and look at each other, but they would be kind of on an angle, maybe facing out more toward the road or they could go and face more toward uh, Cracksburger. Either way um, is fine with me. Um, but I think that's kind of what the discussion is that we had uh, about that. And I'm, I guess I'm looking to get some input from you all to see what your thoughts are with that. Uh, so we'll have a better understanding of, of what it is we're wanting to do there. Yeah, go ahead, David. Uh, what, what kind of concept did you have for how far in from the street for those benches? There really isn't. Um, there isn't anything that's kind of set in stone. If you look in that picture there where that vault is, if you go straight back from that, you'll see a tree that's there. I'm thinking if we stay to the west of that tree, closer to the road, um, just so that we don't do anything that, you know, harms a tree or anything like that. So we'll want to stay away from that so we don't run into a bunch of roots and, and stuff. But and then it's just a matter of the orientation in which you want to put place the benches. I don't know if you, you want to facing toward the forested area, which would be toward uh, Cracksburger Elementary, or if you would rather see them facing more toward the road. Either way, uh, I don't th I don't like the idea of having them face the houses. I don't think the property owners there would like that very much. So that's why I'm thinking either east or west is what my thought is with that. Council, Councilor Reichel. Go ahead, Councilor. Um, just from a, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, just kind of from a perspective, perspective, <laughs> um, about how far would you say that tree is from the sidewalk, that most, that foremost tree, just to kind of get an idea of how big that space is? Probably 30, 35 feet, roughly. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, so uh, this is Bruce Hildreth. Um, what, and I know you said concrete. Mm -hmm. So what if you put one in front of the tree facing towards the road and put one behind the tree facing mm -hmm. into the forest? Um, and the reasoning for me is... There are those people that might want to sun themselves in the late afternoon, although it gets hot. You know, there's other people that want the shade of that tree in the afternoon and want maybe the more uh, sereneness, the coolness of, of that area. I'm pretty familiar with that area uh, myself. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, you don't have to put them back to back, but one on one side of the tree and one on the other side of the tree. Um, that would probably mitigate the need for a larger area of concrete, but maybe I still have to pour a couple of pads to bolt the benches into. Yeah. Either way, we're going to have to pour pads. I think yeah. the thought was is more of a kind of a meeting space. If you did a, 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 maybe an oversized pad there for to the two benches together, you'd have more of a meeting type space where people could say con back to back or congregate or something like that was kind of what the thought is, but mm -hmm. I'm, like I said, I'm open to anything. Whatever you guys would like to see there, I'm open to. Kim Agerson, are you um, imagining a two two benches facing each other, possibly? Or no, I'm thinking oh. that they would they'd face the same direction, but they wouldn't face each other. Kind of, you know, let make like a half moon type of a thing, and then have them on the the back side of the half moon, not the flat side, but the angle side of the moon, circular side. Okay.
Um, David Michael here. Um, it's pretty small space for two benches. Is my is is my thought on it. There are a lot of places that could use benches in this city, and putting two of them in the, in that small space where there heretofore there have been none. I don't see a lot of people occupying both benches uh, for a good part of the time. That's just thinking. Is there a long bench? I think uh, all the benches are eight feet long. I believe. Okay. Could they be um, like at an angle, like if you have a square? Had and then they're kind of at an angle facing towards Cracksburger, so it's more like wings. So that way you're not actually looking at each other, but you're close enough. Like an L shape. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. An L shape might be. And that would still allow um, someone with a walker or a wheelchair could still be wheeled in there and for a motorized scooter or something. So that, so maybe that. L shape might it kind of offsets. I know sun is an issue for some people, but I also know that the shade kind of moves through the day. So you could always find sun somewhere. There's also a bench, like if you look to the back towards the Cracksburger part, there is a bench there that looks out onto Cracksburger. But I don't think I'm thinking it's part of the ball field. It is part of the ball fields. There there's a ball field that's right there. That's actually Cracksburger for, property. Yeah. Yeah district property uh yeah and that bench faces the infield yeah you know through, yeah you look through the fence of the backstop um, so are we feeling one design thing over another or i mean we can table it i mean uh, oh. and maybe i can draw something up real quick yeah. and to kind of show you what the thought is and then we can decide at at the next meeting um the sign as far as the sign's concerned we're working on that now um so that depending on how long it takes for them to build the sign it may be in by the next uh meeting so mm -hmm. so is the sign going to go like to the left of the walk or is it going to go more towards the house i think i'm thinking it would be centered basically on the parcel okay and then the um, dog waste the station. Dog, doggy bag station and garbage can. Right. Kind of right there at that same location. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, as far as conversation and being able to ignore someone, I mean, I think, you know, like an L shape allows you to do that, to do both of those things. So um, you can either be social or not social, which some of us waver between those two. So I don't know. Um, so... I, I was curious, uh, moving away from the benches, what is that service uh, door? I mean, or what is that you... vault? I'm not even, I'm not sure what it is. I don't know ah. if it's ours or if it's um, PGE's or who's exactly, because uh, power's underground in that neighborhood. So ah. I was it wondering how, PGE. how close you could put the sign to that, like in front of it, so that the sign's not now in the middle of a space where maybe somebody will throw a Frisbee. You know, if you kind of put it in front of the vault, people already have to stay away from the vault. But to the yeah, I uh, what you're saying left of that vault, it looks like a, a nice open area. Uh, but if you put a sign there, then people are going to be running into the sign. Yeah, I guess I'd rather have them trip over the vault first than hit the <laughs> sign. <laughs> yeah, because there are um, frisbees back there on Cracksburger property too. So um, I did want to mention that Eric Butler has come. So. He's here now. Yeah, my apologies for being late. I'm moving a little bit slowly at the moment. Okay. All right. Um, medical care is always important. Um, okay. So I, I'm i not sensing a feel for one design or the other. So I appreciate your option, um, Darren, to kind of like make two mock-ups for us. Yep. I can and do then that. Um, next we will say, are we going to use benches that are currently, are the new benches that are at Public Works, or will those be new order? Uh, we do have benches that we could put there currently. Okay, and just get them out there and get that taken care of. Get them installed, and uh, we, of course, need to pour the concrete and all that stuff, but that would be the idea is to pour that and then get the benches in. So and can... we'll put a little pad, too, for the uh, garbage can as well. And then the sign, I mean, to me, I think the garbage can needs to be next to the pathway or as close to it as we can get it. Um, 
and then the sign is, you know, we're flexible with that. I was just thinking center it, but I mean, Bruce did come up with a good idea. Maybe that'll help uh, hide that that vault a little bit. So, okay. All right. So conceivably this could be done by summer, the end of summer. Yes. Conceivably. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Any other questions from the board on um, David M. Scott? Scott? No. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Next uh, nature park update. Um, so I know that counselor or counselor, excuse me, city uh, administrator Betts uh, sent out an email to all of you kind of where we're at with the process um, on the archaeological study that, that needs to be done on that. Um, that is hopefully going to be started at the end of the month of April. And then I believe they're expecting it to be a three-month turnaround on that. So we're looking at probably July before we have anything from them, then that'll have to be uh, sent to SHPO for them. This is all in regards to the, the path. Um, with that being said too, um, they're going to be doing the entire property. So um, hopefully there's no issues and that's not going to skirt us for any of the other amenities that we're looking to do on that property as well. So um so that's moving at the state's pace, as most things do. Um, the other thing is the local share, uh, Metro local share. Um, <clears throat> Marcy's working on that. Um, she's working on getting the application filled out and all of that stuff, everything that we needed to do to get that ready to go, she's working on. Um, I don't have a time frame on that, um, but... I know that she is working on it and it should, depending, because I think they had to do some survey stuff, do a survey uh, because not everything matched up with the, um, uh, what is it? The site plan as far as meeting all the criteria and all that. So I think she's working on that piece along with the application and getting all of that stuff turned in. And then once that gets turned in, then, um, hopefully we'll have that piece done about the same time as the archaeological study, and then we can start moving forward with that. But we're not going to be able to do anything until that archaeological study is done. And this is just the path? The the, the path and, and or anything else on that site. Okay, but as far as what Marcy's working on is just the path part. She is working on the metro local share. Which includes the shelter and... Correct. Okay, all right. Okay. And at that point, then we'd go out for a bid on construction of both the trail and the... Correct. Okay. Uh, well, the trail had to go through design. Right. Um, they'll have to come out, they'll survey everything, design, and then construction. Okay. Uh, and kind of the same thing realistically for the restroom shelter building. I mean, it'll have to have some design and all that stuff with it as well. So... Um, it's going to be a, a slower process, but I think once we have every all the pieces in place, it it should go rather quickly. Okay. Um, I can't say that that will happen by the end of this year, but uh, most definitely next year if everything goes okay with the archaeological study. Okay. So when they come in and do the um, getting the core samples and all of that, do they bring in big equipment? No, I don't believe they do. Uh, one of the questions that was asked is if there was going to be an issue with parking and stuff like that. And I told him there shouldn't be any issues. It's just as long as they don't have a bunch of equipment. So it didn't, excuse me, it didn't sound like they had a bunch of equipment. I think it's more hand work, okay. if I understand. Yeah, I guess I was just worrying about the plant sale in the Arbor Day. I think they're shooting to do that after that event. Okay, all right. That's because they could, I think they could start before that, but I, I think um, Marcy pushed them off to have it start after okay. that event. Cool. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, did anybody have any questions? I was just going to say we get archaeological reviews for some of our projects that work too, and they're pretty, uh, pretty low impact. Okay. 
Uh, next is park amenities. So we now have the uh, new garbage can and two picnic tables out at Nick Shannon Park. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that has taken a while, but they are out and functional. Um, we Once we get going with the Robin Hood Park, they will also get a new picnic table, a new bench, and a new garbage can there. So process or it's a slow moving process but it's slowly moving out um next is the update on the ad hoc tree report eric do you want to kind of give an update you're a part of that uh, yes so the uh, ad hoc tree committee met on monday friday or friday <laughs> um one of those days but you know, there are uh, representatives from several different interests, including uh, arborists from PGE, some from the uh, Frog Nap, and some other community members. And there are a couple of representatives from Oregon uh, Department of Forestry who are community forestry liaisons. And so at this point, we kind of talked about the very basics of what we want to do. The idea is first to develop a street tree code. And so that's going to include things like a uh, uh, placement, care, uh, recommendation to refer to a, a recommended species list that will be maintained separately. So we're not going to specify in code what trees are okay or not, but rather say that we'll maintain a recommended species list to give us the adaptability as things change. And uh, there's some discussion around uh, helping people care for trees about doing community outreach and engagement, uh, getting, putting out a community survey, and then also having kind of an ongoing uh, communication strategy around tree care in the city. Uh, there's some interest in setting up a heritage tree program, but that's going to be a, a longer discussion. The, it's going to be kind of a lower priority than setting up the, uh, the regulatory framework at the moment. And uh, that's about where we're at right now. So mostly we're just reviewing some other tree codes from comp from cities that are comparable size and similar forms of government and look at what we can learn from them and look at some other examples and sharing some other information around so that we'll meet again next month and discuss what we've learned and then have a opportunity to start developing a, ideas for what we want our tree code to look like. Okay. Thank you. Anybody have questions for Eric on the? I was just wondering, Eric, are you guys meet monthly for a while? That's correct. We're meeting on the first Friday of each month. And then the idea is that we'll have something ready to present to council for the uh, July council meeting. Thank you. Okay. And then the last thing I have is the Arbor Day, Arbor Day uh, tree planning and plaque that I need to have approved by the board uh, in your packet. Obviously, there is that sign. Um, I just need to get approval from the parks board so that it can be put in for the tree that's going to be installed at the nature park for the Ar Arbor Day event. With that, also, uh, tomorrow night going to council is the um, declaration for Arbor Day. Um, all of this is in line with the Tree City USA. So every year we'll have to de have a declaration for Arbor Day um, pretty much from here on out. Um, but what I'm asking for you all tonight is to approve the sign uh, for the Arbor Day tree. Okay, are there any questions from the group? Yes, that's the sign. And that's just one of those little plaques that would go on a stake. Um, just as another, um, this sign matches the signs that are already in the nature park on the other two mayor trees and the ginkgo tree. So yeah. it isn't the ginkgo tree. Yeah. And I believe we already have a hole dug. We do. Conveniently. We do. <laughs> Thanks to Scott, we have a not only a hole, but we have soil. So we're already on the way. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. <laughs> so um, anyone want to make a recommendation to accept this? 
uh, I'll go ahead and uh, suggest that we um, accept the uh, public gift uh, from General Tree Service of a tree and uh, and approve the plaque. Going with that. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, so we have a David. motion and a second. Um, Kristen, can you help us with um, the roll call, please? Yeah. Uh, Kate Cornelius. Yes. Eric Butler. Yes. Kim Agramson. Yes. Nancy Turner. Yes. Bruce Hildreth. Yes. David Michael. Yes. So okay. um, there was one other thing I didn't get on the agenda that you were um, curious about canceling the May meeting, Darren. Do you want to do that or do you want me to bring that up? I'll let you bring it up. You'll let me? I will. Okay. Um, May, the month of May on the 8th? 13th. The 13th is the grand opening of the new public works facility. And that is a Monday and it's happening that afternoon right before our Parks Board morning meeting. So Darren was wondering if we would agree to cancel the month of May for the Parks Board meeting to allow them to celebrate and show the town the building. So I'm not sure how the board feels about that, but so uh, do we need a record? Do we need a motion? I just need to know if you guys want to have it or not have it. It's really, I don't need a motion. Okay. okay. All right. So I'm good with skipping it. Since while we're celebrating me, so <laughs> Kim Agramson approves. Um, I think that's a great idea and I'm hope we're all invited. Oh, absolutely. So we'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. That's Bruce Hildreth approve. I guess I approved. <laughs> okay. Thank Was you. there anything else from the um, staff? No, that's all I have. Okay. All right. So moving on to business from the board. Um, at the end of the lesson, we were talking about user fees and mainly rental of the two shelters at... Um, Max Patterson, and that was on our um, goals that we were doing. And I was reminded by someone that there are user fees in the city of Gladstone. And so I wanted to make sure that everybody knew what they were. And so I asked Darren if he could help us with that. And I believe it's on the last page of your packet. Um, so there are user fees in the city of Gladstone. Um, it's not unusual for other cities to also have those. Mostly it has to do with sports teams for the city of Gladstone. Darren, you might do a little better job of doing this, helping with this presentation so I don't screw it up too bad. Um, and then as we go down, I also asked him to let us know like how much per person um, that for the sports. So we do have... Um, Okay, so you um, pay to get into the park. That's one of our user fees, $5. And a resident, you get two free. And if you lose one, you get to pay $5 to get it replaced. Um, and then also the baseball, they're $20 per registered player per year. Um, soccer, $15 per registered player per year. And then tournament fees are like $500 for like a three-day event. Um, Derek's would be a three-day event for $200 because it's a smaller field. And so that's that. So pickleball players um, are $15 per year, but they do a twice a year count. Yeah, because they when we uh, initiated these fees, they were saying their, their population or their um, registered um, players fluctuates throughout the year so they asked if we could do a one halfway through the year type of a thing so that we we could capture anything that's you know people drop off people add in that type of a thing and from what i understand it's pretty standard pretty straightforward there isn't a lot of fluctuation is my understanding okay but one person only pays once a year if they're right. there the whole time okay all right um and then if they have a tournament, that's $200 on a three-day tournament, $200, excuse me. So um, there's also fees for non-Gladstone users. And you can see what those are down there for the baseball, soccer um, teams. 
Do are there very many of those outside non? We haven't had any for quite a while. As far as you know, if a um, I don't know if the, another association wanted to come in and use the fields and stuff like that, I don't know that we. Since I've been here, I haven't seen any. Okay, uh, but that's not to say necessarily that it hasn't. That it couldn't happen. That it couldn't happen, and we wanted to make sure we were covering them just like we do with all the other youth sports in uh, town. Okay. Um, and then the courts per, so the resident, okay, if you're going to, so is this reserving the courts? That is correct. So if a resident wanted to reserve them for a certain time, you can't just show up and play so outside? Cur currently pickleball has the, uh, the courts from, I believe it's 9 a.m. to noon, Monday through Friday. Okay. So if, and then after that, it's open to free play. Anybody can go and play. And then same thing on Saturday, it's still open to play. But if you wanted exclusive exclusivity for those courts, there would be a fee associated for okay, that. Okay, so if someone's teaching a class for Correct. tennis or pickleball, then they would reserve it that way. Okay, yes. all right. Okay. Um, and did you have a sense on how much is gleaned from this? I do not. I don't. It, it fluctuates because it all depends on the number of players. Okay. So like for soccer, you have spring soccer and then you have fall soccer. If there's anybody that plays both fall and uh, spring, they only get charged once. Okay. But there are people that only play fall soccer and not spring soccer. So um, it depends on the um, the number of you know, people that are playing, registered people. Um, I think baseball this year is about $2,700 for the entire season. Okay. And, and then that, that money, so that money, anything that we get from that basically just goes back into the parks budget. So, it, and, you know, like I said, baseball's $2,700 and some change, something like that. Um, the reason baseball, we charge baseball more is because of all the prep work we have to do where soccer, we don't do anything but our normal mowing. So there's not anything to do there. Mm -hmm. And that's similar for pickleball. The only thing we do is when we go every, um, winter, we pressure wash the entire park. So we pressure wash those courts too, but it's not anything out of the normal for us. So that's why they're also $15 a person. Okay. All right. That makes more sense. So do um, the high school, are the high school teams still like the JV teams? Are they still playing soccer down at Meldrum? Uh, They're all, playing all everything. Youth, all youth is the only ones that are playing Okay. Uh, at any of our, at any of the city parks. It's all youth. Okay. No high school. Okay. All right. Um, does anyone on the board have questions about this or... Going back to the baseball and all the prep, though, Darren, and I know you had several meetings uh, um, with with the associations. Uh, did you guys you must have reached an agreement about uh, how how it was going to be maintained and taken care of during the season? As yeah, you... so I mean, we we're doing the exact same thing we did ten years ago. To be quite honest with you, yeah. it's just back then there was no fee for them to be able to use the park. Uh, or the field is is yeah. really what it comes down to. So um, the whole idea behind that was to try to recoup some of our costs with it. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be the total cost to be able to re recoup, but at least they're paying something to help offset some of that. Right. We'll call it maintenance or labor yeah. or whatever you want to call it. So um, and that's that's common in pretty much every city around here. When we set up these. We looked at all the other uh, cities around us to find out what they're charging and how they're structuring their stuff. Right. And um, some are charging more than what we're charging. Some are charging less than what we're charging. Um, but at least it's something. Um, and like I said, as far as recouping costs and stuff like that, that's that fee would be a much, much higher than what uh, sure. that is. Yeah, it's not in totality, but yes, right. Uh, no, that's that's good. I'm I'm glad you guys hammered that out. I mean, I recall it. So thanks. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there is quite a bit of in-kind donation from those 
both baseball and soccer, like lining fields and not not with, they do not with baseball. Not soccer, with baseball. yes. So we the, chalk all the fields, we drag all the fields, we prep all the baseball fields and get them ready at the beginning of the season. Uh soccer, they paint their own lines, they do all of that stuff. That's why there's the different the cost between the two of them. Hmm. Okay. Um, do the community gardens have a fee that they pay? I I don't know what the community gardens pay. I don't okay. have that information. Okay. I know there's an agreement with the city, but I, I don't have it. Okay. All right. I think um, hopefully we'll hear from them in another month or two. And see. Yeah, they are wanting to come and speak at a, a, a meeting. I think originally we had it scheduled for next meeting, but we're canceling that. So we'll move them to the June meeting. Okay, great. All right. Um, yeah, no questions? No more questions on that? Okay, um, onward. Um, I did want to just stop the transit we had talked about doing the transient tax discussion tonight on what it is mm -hmm. how does it work and all of that um but we need a little more time for someone to um gather that information and make that presentation so that will be coming it, yeah that will be coming more than likely at the next meeting okay um uh, marcy uh, is going to be here and i think jackie said she may be here too to discuss that um because I, to be honest with you, I don't know how yeah. all that, that works, but uh, I did talk to Jackie about that. And she was uh, saying that at the next meeting or one of the, the a recent meeting that um, they'd be more than happy to come and talk okay. about that. Because right. that is one of our goals that we were trying to decide. Is it relevant? How could we do this? Do we want to continue that goal? So I think it's information that we need to have. So that also will be um, on our way. Um, the next one. Um, there's a little bit of crossover between, um, but now that I look at it. So in your packet, you also have the Gladstone Parks Recreation Board small project plan. And we had talked about um, coming up with some of the smaller projects that we could do. Either they can go out for grants or maybe money we already have on hand or something. So the group came up with these. And thank you, Kristen, for putting that all together for us. Um, Nick Shannon. Um, came out number one. I think everybody was right there with it. And we're going to come back to Nick Shannon because we want to talk about what are we thinking for the style of play at that park. So let's come back to that. The second one is the Ridgegate Park, excuse me, the David M. Scott one. Um, um, and that is on its way then. We've got kind of a plan and you'll bring some bench arrangement kinds of things for next time. Um, the dog park is also kind of on its way, looking at the grant. Um, and that would just be the fence, correct? Um, for the most part, yeah. There'll be probably a couple garbage cans. Obviously, uh, a doggy bag station. We're in a dog park, of course. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, it'll be mostly just fencing uh, that entire property. Uh, we'll break it up into a smaller dog park area and a larger dog park area so that not everybody, if if a smaller dog doesn't want to go out and play with the big dogs, they've got their own place to, uh, to play, run. so to speak. Okay. Um, so that would be the initial grant. And then... Um, yeah, so that's phase that's one. That's phase one. Yeah, okay. phase one of that. And that's what the T-Mobile grant is that Marcy has submitted. Um the next phase after that would be more than likely there's um, in the site plan for Meldrum, it has the uh, parking lot going in there with, um, you know, water, um, things like that. I think in phase one, there might be some buffering along the uh, mobile home park on the east side. I think that was in mm -hmm. that phase one. I'd have to look again, but I, I, I recall seeing that, so. Okay. There's no water up there, access to water. Currently, no, there is not. But that would be in phase two when we did the the park or the parking lot. And the reason the parking lot needs to be there is if you remember back when we had that discussion on where to put the dog park, um, it's ADA accessibility. And that's why that little parking lot needs to go there is so that somebody uh, with ADA issues can pull up park and get out and use the dog park or their dog can use the dog park. So, uh, but we felt that it was better to do obviously phase one and get the, the, at least the main portion of the park in first and then worry about phase two. So, Hey, Darren, on, on that small parking lot, 
um, would that just be for uh a disability use only. I mean, like you'd have a couple of spots. And you'd put I'd have up. to go back and look at the site plan. I don't recall there being a whole lot of parking stalls in there. I want to say, for some reason, I want to say six. So, I mean, that's not very many. Yeah, but I don't, um, I don't even see a six going up there. Yeah, and maybe it's less. I'd have, to, yeah. like I said, I'd have to look at the site plan again. I can't remember exactly what what it was. Any possibility that stairway could go in from the parking lot down below? up to the top is there a possibility yeah um i'd again i'd have to refer back to the site plan but that wouldn't be obviously ada stuff but i mean no i just yeah. thought he had ada spaces up above you know two or right. three of them and designated only for ada right and everybody else that's pretty mobile can just park their car down below walk up the steps and they're they're there Right. And um, there'll be an entrance off of Jensen Road into that as well, where it pretty much is flat already. Oh, yeah. So if you did park in that parking lot, you could walk down to Jensen Road and then up and into the park as well. Interesting. OK. Think of that. I mean, it would be worth thinking about having more than just ADA spots. Maybe have kind of a couple courtesy spots. Like if you're not, don't have the tag, but you're temporarily limping around or something, or even for people who just don't want to climb that many stairs. Okay. Other questions? I, I really like the plan of the dog park, and I think it will be a really nice addition for the city and um, long time coming. So, um, the fuel reduction management, um, I that that's something that I would like to um, have. I would like to know what other communities are doing. If that's, I know Eric, you had brought this up, um, and kind of look at all of the parks. Some of the parks have access to water, so they're greener all year. Others don't. So that seems like a pretty big topic. That might be a really good goal for next year. That we could kind of look at that. Um, and so before the meeting started, we were kind of talking about Max Patterson and the play and the picnic structures and that there's still some work that needs to be done on those that require a contract and architect. So that is back on the docket to kind of keep going on those. Um, going back to Nick Shannon, um, and all of that so what one thing you guys may want to start thinking about is because our goals our original strategic plan is finished at the end of this year and so at some point we're going to need to come up with a new strategic plan for the next two years um at some point this year 2024 because it'll go and get adopted to council i don't know when yet but uh, if you were the people that were on the board before we set out the strategic plan and then I think it was a council work session where uh, we went through the strategic plan with council and all that. And then they ended up adopting that strategic plan or those goals. So we're going to need it. What I'm getting at is, is this year, we're going to have to come up with a new set of goals that will be a, adopted through council. So, you know, some of these things, if we don't get through them, fine, because we can always add them to the strategic plan for the next two years. But with that being said, I mean, if you're only looking at six items on here and realistically we'll have probably two, if not three of them completed or at least in process, um, those would be things we wouldn't necessarily want to put on that plan because we're already in the process of doing those. So just kind of throwing that out there that here, uh, within the next, I don't know, six months, seven months, we're going to need to come up with a new strategic plan. So um, just kind of a, kind of a heads up there is where I was going. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think the wildfire one might be a really good one for that. Um, that's one we haven't dealt with before. It seems like a lot of our goals, maybe on the next group will be um, monitoring and kind of updating as it goes along, at least like with the Metro funds, and just continuing to deal with them as they cycle through. But it, it would be nice to have some good things to do. Okay, so going on to Nick Shannon, because that was a high priority on our plans. Um, 
one of the things that we talked about was looking at the style of play equipment in that park. Right now it's um, kind of all old, like scabbed together things that ended up up in that park. Um, well, wow, that was fun in our age, probably isn't really good now. So I wanted to make sure that the board kind of talked about what they see would be a value up there, thinking about other play structures within the city. Um, Eric, you had mentioned a nature, a nature component to that. Um, the nature park does have a nature play area on their site plan, but that's gonna be so far down the road right now. So I would like to open it up to the board and kind of just say, this is what I would like to see there or what they feel is a priority. I'd kind of like to ask Eric what he sees in a nature play area to describe it because that I'm, I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> Uh, a nature play area is it's kind of a philosophy of unstructured play so it's a it's a different sort of play structure where it's a lot less prescriptive so it's not things like swing sets and slides it's typically more kind of logs and rocks and climbing structures and places kids can dig and climb and over things and sort of choose their own adventures and they can be variously and be variously designed. They can be kind of anything from just sort of an open space that's designated for kids to build their own stick forts and things like that, up to things that are fairly architectural, but it's really kind of more of an exploratory, unstructured approach to play. Westmoreland Park co yeah. comes to mind. And is that what we're the? Mm hmm. Or I used to work for Twalton Hills Parks and Recreation District years ago. They have a number of nature play areas that kind of fall on the whole spectrum. So uh, to go back to your question, though, about Nick Shannon, what we see or would like to see there, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put in my two cents about a merry-go-round because I was just on one at Berkeley Park and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it replaced the one I used to play on. But um, they're safer because they actually have a governor on them that if no one's pushing it, it slows it down. Mm. And it, this was on a rubber base. Um, uh, geez, I don't know, uh, safety area, I guess I'll call it, so that if a kid fell off and tumbled, it's that uh, hard rubber surface. But I just, the kids played on that an awful lot. I think they liked it. Um, replacing teeter-totters or springboards, um, and they were big ones. They were long springboards, and um, that looked like the kids were having lots of fun. I was on it, so it was good. But those are my two items. Okay. Kate, what would your dream be? I like those ideas because it's kind of like the the play, <laughs> the risky playgrounds of our childhoods, but updated for now. And you don't see a ton of those. Like the one at Meldrum is great, but I think it's a pretty typical playground. So I'm sort of in favor of anything that's different. Um, Nancy, the park that you mentioned, remind us what it's called. Um, it's Errol Heights. Errol Heights, yes. It is off of, I want to say, 39th off of Johnson Creek going into Portland. And it's a new one. It has an industrial feel to it's it. Very, very cool. industrial metal. And my thought when I look at Nick Shannon, as I see those big water tanks back there. And so maybe being able to incorporate both a nature scape, but also some industrial metal component and this Errol Heights one does Ooh. that. It's pretty awesome. 45th. Even, yeah. 45th. 45th, 45th. probably. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're going up the hill and it's on the right. But yeah. so I I agree that this park should be different. It shouldn't just be mm -hmm. a plastic play structure. I'd like to see something that really makes people want to come to it um, and the neighborhood kids get a good park. So that would be my dream. And Eric, you talked about the nature park. Anything else? Um, that's about all I've got. Okay. All right, Kim, you got to bring up the rear. <laughs> I'm not going to bring it up with much, unfortunately, right now. But um, thanks for thinking of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what I'm hearing from the board, and Council Reichel, if you're out there, if you want to wave your hand and come in, that would be great, too. Um. Yep, I'm here. What do okay. what do we need? 
<laughs> well, I was just curious if you had some insight on what you would like to see at Nick Shannon for play structure. Well, side note, I went to Errol Heights daycare when I was a kid, like, you know, <laughs> 40 million years ago. So that was a shocker to hear that name. And I just Googled it and it looks awesome. Um, I really just, I will, you know, concede to whatever you guys feel is going to be appropriate, but all of this stuff sounds great. So highly supportive of doing something unique and, you know, maybe a draw for that okay. part of the community. That would be fantastic. Thank you, okay. Nancy. All right. Yeah. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you. I am a big proponent of anything that swings. I'm not necessarily meaning a swing set because I don't think we have room to do everything else and that, but some sort of something. Um, they have like little trampoline looking things that swing that don't need near the drop zone. So something that you could swing on would be awesome. But so how's that for, we want all of that in that little tiny park. <laughs> I have Kate and I have David. So um, you two exchange it and go, okay. Well, I, I, I would love to have everything in that park. I love having kids in that park, but I have a couple of observations. One, uh, if you're going to add a lot to the park, you're going to need to do a traffic study because there's not much parking. Parking. The parking is is tight there, which I don't know. They can park in front of my house. I, I really don't care. But the other thing is, is if we modify the um, merry-go-round, if it doesn't squeak, I'll be missing something I've heard for 40 years. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was just thinking of uh, there's a really cool playground near my parents' house that has a like a zip line that's a metal. The whole thing is metal and it's like on a track mm. and it's it is adult human size because I had to try it out. But that's really cool. And a lot of people go to that park because it's a weird extra kind of thing. So instead of just a line of swings, there's this like zip line swing and regular swings so it's super cool so darren does that give you any idea of what you would like to go out and ask a vendor for <laughs> were we clear enough <laughs> yeah clear as mud Got okay <laughs> well okay um how do you do that do you uh, what do you want us to do about that? Work on it a little longer or you got enough ideas that we want something different and these are our highlights? Yeah, no, I've got enough. I, okay. Um, I will get with um, a vendor and see what we come up with, see if there's a way to do, you know, some nature and some non-nature and kind of incorporate it in and see what we can come up with. Okay. Um, and then what I can do once I get that, <clears throat> um. I'll bring it back to you guys and see what you guys think. We can tweak it. We can change it. We can do whatever uh, and just kind of go from there. All right. Great. Um, one of the things that we talked about, and I know we're running up on our hour here, but, and it might be really good if you could share that information. Kate and I were kind of like, oh, we hadn't thought about it, that there's a difference between a brand new structure um, to as a replacement and as opposed to a placement and how much staff time is required. And I think that that's a really good component for all of us to hear and keep in mind. Right. So um, the conversation was, is it comes down to maintenance. Um, everything that we add to a park, it requires maintenance. When we add something new that's not already there, that's added maintenance. Replacing something that's already there and existing, we're already maintaining it. So there isn't really any more maintenance cost associated with that, I guess is probably the best way to put that. Um, for example, if you were to take and add just hypothetical at um, Ames Park and add a play structure in there, I mean, that would never really happen, but that would be added maintenance for us to do um, where if you like at Nick Shannon, we're just replacing what's there the maintenance doesn't, the maintenance is a wash, I guess, is where I'm going with that. And it, it, I think that's important. We need to really kind of think about that as we do move forward with some of these things. For example, the restroom and shelter at um, the nature park, putting that in is going to add to our maintenance uh, overall because we'll have to clean the restrooms, maintain those. Same thing with the shelters and all of that. So 
I think that as we move forward, not saying that we don't do any of that, I just think we need to look at it and be smart with the way that we do it so that it doesn't end up uh, causing more work for us in the long run. I think um, we all understand that more stuff requires more maintenance. I think that we're good enough to know that. I'm, I don't think that, I don't want to see that become a barrier to us getting cool stuff for our city. And yeah, it's going to cost more. And it's our job to keep that in mind all, at all times. But, uh, you know, if we had a really cool place structure up there at, at Nick Shannon, uh, yeah, okay, it'll cost more. But, you know, that's what we're all about is making sure that the city has the amenities that we really want. Right. No, and I agree. And that's what I'm saying is, is that taking and replacing the existing structure and putting in a new structure maintenance wise, it's nothing different for us. It's when we go and add. So that's where I was going with that. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Um, I, um, so I think as far as business from the board, any other business from the board, just want to clarify. Okay. Um, so our next meeting will not be May 18th. It will be possibly in June. Um, we t That was another one of the things we had talked about with maybe uh, looking at using West funds for stabilization of banks along the river. Um, I uh. So that was kind of what that is. We have that pot of funds from West that has to be used along the river riverfronts. Yeah. I have contact information for someone with Wes to talk to about that as well. So I'll pass this along to Darren. Okay, great. Okay. So I know that um, the Watershed Council is doing a lot of renovation along that, or not renovation. Help me out with the word. Restoration um, in the fall, both in the spring and in the fall. So that is happening, but maybe we can use some Wes money to get it going a little better or something. That's an option. Yeah, Meldrum is also outside of our area, so that would be a separate project there. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, I would like to, oh, is there any business from the audience? No? Okay. I would like to offer a thank you to Public Works, to Darren, and to Scott for working so hard to get the Nature Park looking spiffy for the Arbor Day event. It really looks different, looks well cared for. Thank you. I know that got pushed in there. So I appreciate that. If anybody else has something that they've seen. Oh, and the new garbage cans. It was like an Easter egg hunt trying to find them. So thank you. It's fun to <laughs> <laughs> figure out where in the city is the new garbage can. Kind of like the dog, the police dog. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, I appreciate that it's getting out there and it's fun to see it happen. So anybody else have something they've observed? Uh, we have, uh, CRBC has a volunteer event at Cross Park on April 20th in the morning. So we'll be doing some bolt chain, we'll be doing some trash cleanup, some ivy pulling. It's open to the public. Look us up at clackamasriver.org under events and sign up. Okay. Nancy, give a shout. When is that event the at the Nature Park? Yes, um, remind the 27th. us. Saturday the 27th. During the day? Yes, from nine until two. Nine to two. And the tree planting dedication, I think, is at 12. So, all right. Um, I just want to express my thanks to Public Works, Darren and Scott. Um, helped us with those bumpers uh, for parking. And uh, I think right now they're they're working out. Um, I would like to ask if we could have permission to paint some yellow stripes on them um, so that it kind of shows up um, so people understand that it's parking um, and maybe request some signs uh, that say head in parking only uh, because we've still had some people parking oddly. <laughs> um, and we've had some people parking uh, up at the up at the nature park where we did this work Um they're parking there all day, like leaving vehicles. Um, there used to be a two hour parking minimum up there when we had about three spaces. <laughs> um, and we don't have, we really don't have that many more spaces. Uh, we just have a lot more maneuverability. And so I'm just kind of wondering if there could be a 
couple of signs that we could post. We may even get some permission to put them on the fence there that we're protecting with those parking bumpers. Um, it would, I think it would help out uh, an awful lot uh, to orient people, but anyhow, it was meant to be a compliment, but a request, I guess, too. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, and I see that um, Councillor Reichel has her hand up again. Um, yes, yeah, sorry. I just I want to make sure that I convey the information about both of the um, events mentioned um, during the council meeting tomorrow. Um, Eric, could you give me the website again for the cross park cleanup event? Uh, Clockamisriver.org, and I can I can forward that the registration link to everyone. If you could, that would be great. And you, what time was that at? Uh, 9 a.m. 9 a.m., thank you. And then Nancy, please help me. I'm so sorry. What date is the Arbor Day event? Because Arbor Day falls not on the same day, correct? Right, that is correct. Um, April 27th. Thank you. Which is a Saturday. And I think Arbor Day is the 26th. E something like that. Yeah, like it maybe falls on a weekday. Could be. How dare they? Yeah, I um, know, right? Okay, yeah. but April 27th, 9 to 2 for the Arbor Day, and then April 20th for the Cross Park cleanup starts at 9 a.m. Correct. Did I get that correct? Yeah, and it's going it to be about 9 to noon. 9 to noon. Okay, perfect. Thank you, you guys. I appreciate it. And I also would like to say thank you to Public Works and the Parks Department for everything you guys do. It's unbelievable how much work you do so thank you and that's all <laughs> okay all right if there's no more business um i will entertain a motion to end the meeting a motion we adjourn can we have a second second okay so we have a motion from kate cornelius to adjourn and david michael second um kristen can you read the roll please yep kate cornelius yes eric butler yes uh, Kay, uh, Kim Agramson? Yes. Nancy Turner? Yes. Bruce Hildreth? Yes. David Michael? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much.